Let us pray. In the midst of the coronavirus pandemic, we thank you, Lord, for giving us the word of truth and life. We keep still and seek refuge within you, Father. Please guide each and every one of us, but especially the young listeners of today's message, with your spirit, so that they may receive and understand the word of God. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus, name we pray, amen. Meditation of the week comes from Psalms 91, verses 1 through 16. Please follow along if you have your Bible. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler, and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him, and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him, and show him my salvation. Amen. Uh, today's message it's titled, Let Us Keep the Faith and Purity with Fear and Trembling, Looking for the Judgment Seat of Christ. The main text comes from 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 through 8. I charge thee, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall quick the, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with long, all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. But watching thou in all things, endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Amen. Now we hear the final word of Apostle Paul who had kept his faith 
preaching to the Gentiles looking forward to the appearing of the Lord Jesus Christ and his kingdom. He charged Timothy, his disciple, as well as spiritual son, and also a pastor in the Lord. He encouraged him to preach the word of judgment, like himself, while looking forward to the day of Christ. He testified that the Lord will give the crown of righteousness unto all of them that love is appearing. The crown of righteousness is the tremendous blessing giving the right of ruling with Christ in his millennial kingdom. The Lord Jesus Christ himself spoke of the day of his appearing as well as his kingdom as testified by Apostle Paul. Apostle John also testified of what Jesus had said about his appearing in John chapter 5 verse 25. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. When he spoke of one that hears his voice, he said that they are the sheep who believe in him and follows him. He also figuratively described the scene where his sheep hear his voice and rise through the heavenly door when he opens the door to heaven. We see this in John chapter 10, verses 1 through 4. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. But, he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. In addition, the Lord spoke to Martha before he raised Lazarus from the dead as to who are the one that believes in him. In John chapter 11, 25 through 27, it says, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? She saith unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. The Holy Spirit explained through the Apostle Paul what Jesus meant by saying, He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live, and whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. When he testified to the saints of Thessalonica of the day of Christ and also what it means. He said this in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verses 16 and 17. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. That's right. Coronavirus-19 has become pestilence affecting all around the world, terrifying all nations of people, giving tremendous fear of death. But if we believe in the word of the Lord, we are free from such kind of fear because of the day of resurrection. Even now, 
Jesus our Lord is asking us through the Holy Spirit saying, Do you believe this? Therefore, we are free whether we live within the body or without. When the Lord was the Son of Man in the world, he showed in a vision unto some of his disciples the kingdom that shall come to pass on the earth in the future. We see this in Matthew chapter 16, verse 28 through chapter 17, verse 3. Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. And after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringeth them up into an high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias talking with him. Apostle John saw the scene when two witnesses appeared and prophesied for 42 months before the Lord returned to the earth and were killed by the beast, Antichrist, ascended out of the bottomless pit. But they rose again and ascended up to heaven in a cloud. There are many interpretations of these two witnesses. But it is clear that these two are Moses and Elijah. As the Lord had previously shown to the disciples in a vision about the two men that he would raise in his kingdom. It is written in Revelation uh, chapter 11 verses 3 through 6. And I will give power unto my two witnesses and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days clothed in sackcloth these are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the god of the earth and if any man will hurt them fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies and if any man will hurt them he must in this manner be killed these have power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy, and have power over waters to turn them to blood, and to smite the earth with all plagues, as often as they will. In book of Exodus, we get to learn about how Moses, in, Moses is involved with turning water into blood and bringing plague in first Kings chapter 17 we also get to learn about how prophet Elijah was given the power to stop rain for a long time okay back to the main message the mother of John and James told Jesus asking of her two sons to sit one on his right hand and the other on his left hand in his kingdom then Jesus said in Matthew chapter 20, verses 22 and 23, Ye know not what ye ask. Are ye able to drink of the cup that I shall drink of, and to be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They say unto him, We are able. And he saith unto them, Ye shall drink indeed of my cup, and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized, baptized with. But to sit on my right hand and on my left is not mine to give, but it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared of my Father. Through his word and the miracles made by the two witnesses seen by the Apostle John, we can realize that Moses and Elijah shall be honored to sit on the right hand and the left hand of Lord in Christ's millennial kingdom. We are living in the last days 
when the appearing of the Lord Jesus Christ and his kingdom are very near to come. The word end time not only means the end of the world, but also means that the rule of the devil is almost over. And the time when the reign of our Lord Jesus Christ begins to come to heaven and earth. Apostle Paul testified to the saints of Ephesus about what would happen in these last days. He said this in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 9 and 10. Having made known unto the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. There are two very most important things we should always meditate in our hearts as we watch for the day of Christ and raise our faith. The first one is that all of us has, have to stand before the judgment seat of Christ to be judged according to what we have done, good or evil. Apostle Paul testified of this in Romans chapter 14, verse 10, But why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why dost thou set a not thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Secondly, as Apostle John testified, looking forward that day expecting to be like Christ, we have to be purified as Christ is pure so that we may be blameless, all our spirit and the soul and the body. He said this in 1 John chapter 3, verses 2 and 3. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. When we get to meet Jesus in our new body, do you ever wonder how you're going to notice him? Like, among all the saved Christians, we're all going to look like just bodies of light. So how do we differentiate Jesus Christ from among so many of the saints? No, no guesses? Um, I learned this through church. Uh, I believe there's a hymn uh, that relates to this too, but you get to see the main difference between Jesus and us is we don't have any holes in our hands or feet because he was the only one that cru was crucified. Right? It's amazing, right? Um, uh, it's been another wild week. But nevertheless, with uh, even with coronavirus happening, far through with God's blessings. As we hear of numbers of the infected increase along with the unemployment rates skyrocketing due to non-essential business closings and layoffs, the news was also close the news was also hit close to home, uh, believe it or not. Home as in my work during the day. Even though we're part of essential business, 
um, several of the fellow technicians were laid off and, or furloughed. This further went out to other departments as well, even into sales and parts department. Um, our department, where I work, was also not in the clear as we took we also took a hit on working hours, meaning our working hours were halved, um, almost halved, almost half day, and our crew was split into AM and PM. So, among all the technicians that I work with. Half of us start in the morning and leave just after lunch and the other start just before lunch and they could go through all day through the end of the night. And this first came to mind in first Thessalonians chapter five, verse 18 in everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you concerning me so not so long ago I would have immediately worried on how will I survive and what about my bills uh, what about this virus that's going all, all over the place that would have hit me first um, but this go around I saw it as an opportunity to read the Bible a uh, little deeper and a little more as I had few more hours to dedicate to the Word of God. Searching the scriptures before and after working hours. Uh, not sure how many of you listeners are and have been quarantined at home. It's been a while, right? But as someone who is exposed to the outside world uh, working, I see this as my opportunity to be uh, get closer to God. A little one-on-one -on -one session whenever I get home early. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore be ye not unwise but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 16 and 17. All we hear about is the evil coronavirus, right? Day in, day out. Days are evil. And also, how are you going to understand what the, what the will of the Lord is if you just sit there and not study, right? That's why reading the Bible is important. I had wished I was less tired physically from work and had more time to study the Bible. Um, well, it's here. Um, so I better use it wisely the time given, um, better do it now rather than have Jesus ask me later at the, later at the judgment seat. Oh, uh, I gave you all that time during the coronavirus pandemic. Remember, why didn't you use it? Yeah. Accept, accepting Jesus as the Lord and savior is one-on-one -on -one relationship. Um, Nobody is born a believer. Studying the scripture and making it your own also is your duty as a saved Christian. You know, we're not plants. We don't drink water and just hold the Bible and stand out in the sun, hoping the knowledge would just come through osmosis. It doesn't work that way. Well, we have to study because according to the scripture in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, it says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word, dividing the word of truth. 
So basically knowing the dispensational times. Meaning when Adam and Eve, how they got saved, how the law applied to the Jews during that era, and then so forth, how now we live in the uh, age of grace. What is keeping me safe? Faith in the Lord, uh, Word of God. As we read earlier, um, let's look at it again in Psalms 91, verse 3. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. Still standing here. Still working. There shall no evil befall thee. This is verse 10. Neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. No, sir. Not in my house. None of this coronavirus um, pestilence, plague, nowhere near my house. Well, some of my, some of your listeners might say, well, how does that apply? I mean, how does that work? We got to have faith, right? According to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I'll put it simply, folks, trust in the Lord. Blessings to all of you and may the grace and knowledge of truth of our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus be with you all. Amen. This week's message and previous recordings can be found on our website at WGMI.org. That's WGMI.org. You can also find us on podcast and on YouTube by searching WGM Church in the search field. For Android users, you can find us through TuneIn app. That's T-U-N-E-I-N by also typing WGM Church in the search field.